In this video, we will look at performing a trace table on a recursive function. So we have a column for call, which will record the number of times the function is called. It will record the state of the parameter and the code within the function and the function's return value. We are going to take an assumed input of 5. So our starting point is the main function. So it jumps to this line here where we are taking an input, which is an integer, and we're storing it in a variable called num. We are calling the factorial function and sending it the variable num. When that's finished, we will have the string literal, the factorial of num is and the factorial value returned by the function. So let's run this program now with the data using five. So our first factorial call will be this line here and we're sending it num, which is five. So call number one num will be 5. We are now going to look at this code within the function. So num the parameter is set to 5. If num is equal to 0, well num is 5, so 5 equal to 0 is false. So we jump to this line of code here, which is stating return the value of num, which is 5, multiplied by the factorial of num minus 1, which will be 4. So we are now in the second call of the function, and num has the value of 4. 4 equal to 0 is false. We will return, so we've jumped to this line here, return num, which is 4, multiplied by the factorial of num minus 1, num is 4, so the factorial parameter value will be 3. So this is our second call. So we're now into our third call to the function. Num is 3. 3 equal to 0 is false. That's this if statement here. So therefore we jump to this line here return num, which is 3, multiplied by the function called factorial with the value num minus 1, num is 3, so num minus 1 is 2. So this is our fourth call to the function. The parameter value for num is 2. 2 equal to 0 is false. Therefore, return. So we're going to jump to this line here. Return num, which is 2, multiplied by the factorial. So we have another function call with n minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. So this is our fifth call to the function. n minus 1, n is 2, minus 1 is 1. 1 equal to 0 is false. 
So we come to this line of code here, return num, which is one, multiplied by function call factorial with the value of n minus one, which is zero. So we're now on the sixth call to the function. The parameter is zero. So zero equal to zero is true. Therefore, we will execute this line here, which is return one. So we're going to write one in this return bracket. So that is the end of this sixth call to this function. Now, in an exam question, all of this work normally gets only one mark. The marks are allocated from the return values as it iterates back through the function calls. So this one travels back up to here. And think of this as a cancellation. We are finished with this function call, so therefore we can put a one above it. So one times one is one. So we are going to return this value here. The one is returned to this function call here. So this can be cancelled out. And we can put a one above that. Return two times one, which is two. Return the func function. This cancels this to the value of two. 3 times 2 is 6. The 6 will be returned from this function call. Therefore, that cancels that. 4 times 6 is 24. The 24 replaces this function call here. 5 times 24 is 120. So we've now finished with all of the function calls. We've worked our way down. We've calculated our return values. And now we have to look at where the 120 final value will be returned. And we can see in the code that it will travel back up to here and replace this value here. So 120 will be placed in the variable fact. So when it comes to this print statement, it will state print the factorial of num, which is five, is 120.